That didn't go to plan. So what we've got here is I've just used the old chlorinated penguin killer to uh, clean this bearing out. I'm just going to reuse it because my mate Sam, he's an engineer. You reckon it was more than good enough? <laughs> he said $9, no, why don't you replace that? Uh -huh. So, looks like we're keeping that there. And what we're going to do is press on this new um, scene 003. Press on to here. And then, and then we're going to shut this one back on afterwards. I've got this spear cam shaft as reference. So I can line the lobes up with the correct see in between um, at top dead center line up this hole here um, yeah we'll see how that goes eh see how accurate I can get that and then chuck on our spacer and we can actually do a dummy fit up of our cam sprocket and chain so I might actually give this a little bit of a wire buff and then we'll head over to the press so we found this on the lathe they're going to be the perfect size to press on this bearing. And she's bottom down. So it goes on this way. Towards the bearing is there's a small lip there just to stop this face run rubbing on the outer race. So what we'll do is we'll chuck this on loosely once we uh, confirm where the center mark is. I could do this by eye. I think the easiest way to do this. I scrubbed a line on it, didn't I? I did, and I scrubbed a line there too. I've got two scrubbed lines. So what I'll do is I'll run my engineer square down this line here I've scrubbed, make sure it lines up in between these two cam lobes, and it should be right. Bit of brass from an apprenticeship project. That'll do. She tight. Now it's time to clean up these bad boys. I don't think they're particularly dirty, but I'll give everything a bit of a once over. Now we grab the new camshaft, and put a tiny bit of oil in there, that'll just help everything when we do the initial start up, drop the bearing on through. It pops in like so. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Michael for the generous donation to the channel. Um, 
I've since spent this on a knurling tool for the lathe, since you noticed my subpar filing skills in the previous video. The hole I've just drilled now needs to be tapped M8 by 1.25. This is so I can mount the bush for the cam chain idler sprocket. This is where I make the bush for the cam chain idler sprocket. This particular piece of stock, I don't actually know what it is. I believe it could be 4140, but who knows. So the plan was to turn the stock down to around 7.9 millimeters. This would allow me to thread on a M8 by 1.25 die nut. And in case you're wondering why this isn't being parted off in the lathe, it is because my part off blade's pretty crap and there would be a whole lot less headaches with a 1mm cutoff disc. So this is the cam chain tensioner from the Life and Engine. The plan here is to steal the little bush from this tensioner and then press it onto the bush I've made so that the idler sprocket can run on the original material it was intended to run on as I don't know if it's a special type of steel or iron and it will just be replacing like for like and then I don't have to worry about the idler gear chewing through whatever I make. So Prior to machining this down, I consulted the machinery handbook to figure out what I needed to hit for a half decent press fit, and it looked like I had about 15 microns to play with, which is pretty tight for this old lathe. So here's the shortened part, fresh off the lathe. We'll give it a quick measure up and see how we did. Right back, put a light squeeze on that. And bring forward the tail stock. Make sure this is round the right way to begin with. Now close up the tail stock and push it in. That way I can loosen this up so it can clear the piece that's going to stick out in the centre. So you can see here I've had a crack at spot facing this but I did that in the drill press and it's not 
exactly designed for those kind of things and you can see the surface finish is pretty average and not particularly flat so that's going on the mill and we are going to interpolate a small flat surface for this here to snug up against i'm also going to put a slip through here with a hacksaw and then this can be held in with Loctite and screwed in with a screwdriver. And the beauty of it, because of the way the engine rotates, is if this were to bind up, it would be self tightening. So that just goes in there like that. Little gear goes on. And easy peasy. Prop it up on this bit of polystyrene. So I can attach the cylinders. So I can't actually shorten that till I can get this cylinder flush, but because that's a 110cc crankshaft, the crank wheels are actually slightly larger and they are interfering with the cylinder skirt that protrudes from the bottom. So we're looking like we're going to need to cut this by, I don't know, one two, three, four links, and then I've got a link to rivet in, and then from there, come up with a little tensioner, and should be right. 